Good morning to you. This morning I'm going to try and do my best at explaining Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm according to COS 2611, um, the May-June uh, 2014 exam paper, um, according to what Junis has given us. Um, I'm going to cover question 8b from the 2014 exam paper and this is the original diagram that they've provided us with as you can see may june 2014 uh, cos2611 it says here use the shortest path algorithm to find the shortest distance from node zero to every other node of the graph give only the contents of the arrays smallest weight and weight found for each iteration of the algorithm do not redraw the diagram. Okay, so I'm going to try and go through this here and explain it to you as we're going through. So basically we're starting off on node 0 and we want to find out what's the shortest distance to the next node. So at the moment the shortest distance between 0 and 1 is 5 and 0 and 2 is 2 because there's the weight there, okay? So, um, if we have to translate this, um, basically these other weights don't have direct access to zero. Um, as you can see, the arrow is pointing up here. Um, this arrow comes from two, and this arrow comes from one. So, the shortest from zero, uh, that's leading out from zero, is this weight will be five, this weight will be 2, and this weight will be 0. If we go to the next one, you can see there I've specified that the weight over here is 0. The weight for this is 2, and the weight for this is 5. So the next uh, shortest weight, or the minimal weight after 0, is going to be 2. So we fill in our table here and we're saying that we've got a small weight of 0, 5 and 2 and the other weights are all infinity which is 3, 4 and 5. Okay. So now when we want to, we're going to start, we're going to go on to node number 2 because that is the, it's got the least weight from 0 and there's only two other nodes that lead out directly from 0. Okay. So as you can see here, the weight from uh, number 2, you can see the next node is only 1, and the other node is 9. Okay? But you've got to remember that we're taking it from 0 to that node. So basically we're still leaving the weight um, node number 2, where we, we're visiting this node. So as we visit the node, we mark it as true. Okay. So we visited this node number two, and we found that the weight is two from zero, and we find that the weight from uh, to node three is going to be uh, weight of three, and we find that the weight of uh, node four from zero is going to give us a weight, a total weight of eleven. Okay. And I've uh, just put here that you, you get the 2 from this weight and then the 9 from this weight. And then that's how you get your values here. Okay. So weight 5 still remains as infinity because we've got no direct access to it. All right. And um, yeah, this one still remains 5. So now we realize that the next only available node from node zero is node one and that's got a weight of five so on our next slide you see that we're visiting uh, node one which is over here and it's got the weight of five and yes we're visiting it so we're marking it as true and as you can see the weight of uh, of node three is a weight of three and the weight of node 4 is a weight of 11. Yeah. Now, next, the next shortest, uh, the next shortest weight is basically node number 3. So 
And now we're going to go to node number three. All right. So here we are visiting node number three. And if you have a look here, from node number three, the shortest distance or the only one that actually leads out from here is node number four. So the shortest distance from zero to four is going to be five. And the path that we're taking is this 0 to 2, this 2 to 3, and this 3 to 4. Okay, so the weight for number node number 3 is still going to be 3. Okay, but now the weight from 0 to 4 is now changing to 5 instead of 11. Okay, and so you'll see there that they're saying that we're putting the weight of and we're visiting node 3 since that is the only next node that was available with the shortest path from 0 okay, after visiting uh, node number 1. So now the next node we're visiting is node number 4. So you'll see there that node number 4 becomes the value of 5 okay, and that we're able to visit it. But node number 5, if you have a look, the arrow is not pointing towards node number 5 at all. Node number 5 only goes towards a 0 or towards a 4. So node number 5 will always be infinity because there is no access to node number 5. So if you have a look at the next one, you'll see there that they're giving us marks because we are now classifying that node number 5 is not able to be visited but all the the smallest weights to each node adds up to these um, these weights i hope that this has helped you understand this dijkstra shortest path algorithm and that this is useful and helpful for your exam revision thank you for watching and good luck with the exams